Hello and welcome to this week's Tuesday Tech Talk. This week is going to be as quick as I can get it out. These are the six plus one basic things that you need in order to go fast on a motorcycle. I'd rather see some guy out there on an 03 ZX6 that's just clapped out but absolutely ripping through the corners than seeing some dude on a $20,000 bike flying down the straightaway and then parking it in the corner. The amount of track days that I've been to and seen that stuff, whether it's in Sonoma, California or if it's in Barber in Alabama, is astounding. So, the number one thing that you need, if it's a stock bike, or if it's a bike that you bought from somebody else, is a quality set of tires. I love a Q3. Dunlop Q3, Q3 Plus, Q4 is an amazing tire. I race with a GPA, and it's an amazing tire, but Dunlop is able to take the technology from that and put it into a usable tire. The GPAs just take so much temperature and stuff like that in order to ride it to its maximum potential. These tires you don't have to worry about a warmer. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You get the pressure set, you don't really need to tweak them that much. You don't run a warmer, your tires are hot in a half a lap. It's great. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And you're able to eliminate the doubt of those different things. The tire will be consistent underneath you, and that's all you need until you start racing in Moto America. I think if you're at a club race, you can run those just fine. The second thing. Handlebars and rear sets. The biggest thing is having the adjustability so you can get comfortable on the bike, whether it's the rear set and having the adjustable foot position or the handlebar having your adjustable uh, degrees as well as fore and aft. Those things are crucial because if you're not comfortable on the bike, you're not going to be able to ride the bike for a long time. You're never going to be able to go fast because you're constantly going to be thinking about it. This is an Evoltec rear set. This is a Zeta handlebar. Evoltec is made in the USA. These are made in Japan. Um, go into these for the detail later on. Just remember you need quality parts so then you can get comfortable on the bike. That's the biggest thing is being comfortable. Number three, suspension. This is an Olin's TTX rear shock and I run Olin's front suspension as well. Get something that's quality and then it will last you for a while. You don't have to be making these upgrades all the time. You can get a package deal from Superbike Unlimited's website where you get front forks and a rear shock for like three grand. And is it a lot of money? Yes, but you're able to space it out because you're going to be using it for a while. It's not something that will then be a recurring cost as long as you don't crash or damage it. You can also get them serviced regularly so then they will last you for a long time. You get a TTX rear shock and it will last you all the way through your racing. You don't need to change a rear shock that much. You, like. You don't need the brand new 2020, 2021 stuff. You can get stuff that's a little bit old but will be quality so then you have the consistency of the bike underneath you for you to change on the bike. Change different things, not have the bike be changing underneath you. After that is getting a dyno jet system. Getting a dyno jet system is amazing because then you have a quick shifter. You don't have to be rolling off in the straightaway just to tap from second to third gear. You're able to keep it wide open and it will automatically cut it for you. The other thing with the Dynojet system is you can then adjust the fuel map. Why would you want to adjust the fuel map? The reason for that is number five, getting an exhaust. Getting an exhaust is crucial because it's really only the biggest power upgrade that you can do to the engine. You don't really need to change that much. We didn't do that much. I was basically running a stock motor in Super Sport and it's just fine. You don't need to do that much. You don't need to be putting MR12 in your R6. It's ridiculous. Getting an exhaust, getting a dyno jet system, those are the basic things that you need to go from zero to hero. After an exhaust, after you get the bike to go, brakes, stopping, steel braided brake lines, getting rid of that squishy feeling in the front so you have a consistent bike from start to finish. Again, it's crucial. You want to change on the bike, not have the bike be changing under you. Have it be consistent, have it be quality, then you don't have to worry about it. After steel brake lines, this is the plus one. This is number seven. It's a uh, seat tray. Being able to have the bike be consistent under you, being able to feel what the suspension or the tire is doing. I remember being 13 years old and riding an SV650 and just feeling the seat, the stock seat, because it's you're just squishing the entire time. I basically run a flat seat. There's a little bit of rubber on it, and that's it. I don't really want that much to be changing. And that hasn't changed from when I was 14 years old. Get a seat tray, and that's really it. You can run stock bodywork at track days all the way through at most organizations in advance. You'll, you'll be fine. 
when you start racing, then you'll need some of these other things. Get a seat tray and you'll be set. Peace. So while we're waiting for the green flag to eventually drop, go to teespring.com slash lampkin2020 and check out some of the shirts on there and see if you want to support. Bye.